Pittsburgh and Ted. All right, y'all, thank you very much. Do not adjust your sets. What a vision in red we are up here tonight. I got left out someplace. Well, Mary Jo Fernandez, Tracy, moves into the uh, rounds now where she's going to play seeded players. Is her game ready for the challenge? Well, I'm not quite sure because Mary Pierce is very, very tough. These two players have played once before. But that was two years ago in the French Open. Mary Jo Fernandez won. Mary Pierce was only 15 years old then, and her game has increased and improved so much since then. Mary Jo hasn't been playing that well this summer. Lost in the third round of the French Open, third round of Wimbledon, and her first two matches here went to three sets. She's really been struggling. She's going to have to play with a lot more conviction, a lot more authority tonight. All right, and she gets tested tonight by Mary Pierce, a young lady that many tennis fans have heard of more because of what happens off the court with her father than on the court. Turing Pro Elise Bergen joining us tonight for the match. Talk about Mary Pierce on the court. What kind of player is Put she? Put me on the spot. Mary, Mary Pierce tonight needs to play the role of the bully. She is the big hitter of the two players. She hits with a bit of topspin off of both sides, but is very powerful. Needs to take control. If she does that, she's going to give Mary Jo Fernandez one heck of a match. All right, now what about under the lights, stadium court, first time for Mary Pierce? Is she ready for that? This is an occasion she's not used to like Mary Jo, but she is French now. She has played under big occasions in Paris, in at the French. She's not used to this here at the Open, but she's used to the big time. It should be quite an interesting match. All right, well, we are set for what we anticipate to be a very competitive match. Two seeds meeting in the fourth round of women's singles. Mary Pierce, Mary Jo Fernandez will have the match for you next on USA. Mary Jo Fernandez on the right. Seeds preparing to collide here in the fourth round of women's singles action. The winner will draw Gabriella Sabatini in the quarterfinals. As we look at the young... Uh, now French woman Mary Pierce and the seventh seed Mary Jo Fernandez. The year for Mary Jo, as uh, Tracy alluded to in the open, has been a little tough in the majors, but she does have the experience here. Tracy, a semifinal appearance two years ago. That's right, and Mary Jo has gotten to the finals of the Australian twice. She got to the uh, uh, finals in 1990 and then earlier this year. She's kind of had an up and down year getting the finals there and then as I said, losing in the third round in French and Wimbledon. So she was a bronze medalist in the Olympics and a gold medalist in doubles with Gigi Fernandez. And she's been working with Harold Solomon since the beginning of the year, trying to become more aggressive. She always had that good ground stroke game. And she's trying to finish it off with the volleys. And I know from experience, sometimes you get a little mixed up. You lose your bread and butter in trying to work on something new lose a little bit of that confidence in your ground strokes. I think that might be something that she's going through right now. Mary Pierce, uh, 17 years of age, born in Montreal, and uh, with her family about a year ago, moved and took up residence in France. She has won two tournaments this year in Europe, one on carpet, one on clay. And the one time they met in the 1990 French Open on the red clay and a straight set win for Mary Jo Fernandez. So that's Pierce to serve. Quiet place, ladies and gentlemen. Umpires Thomas Braun for this match. Quiet place. Thank you. And we'll begin with Mary Pierce serving. Play. Mary Jo meeting Donna Faber, 6-4 in the third, Natalia Medvedeva, 6-1 in the third, and Brenda Schultz from the Netherlands, 4-2. and two. Brenda's big, big server, so that's a, that's a good result, 4-2. and two. He's picking up.
Mary Jo starting quick with the drop shot. She hit it well behind the baseline. She might be trying that drop shot because Mary Pierce has the leg strapped. Going to make her test it in the beginning. Love, love, Jane. Mary Pierce, relatively easy road to the round of 16. Maria Vento of Venezuela, Linda Ferrando of Italy, who was the spoiler of Monica Sellis a couple of years ago, and Robin White of California, two and one in the third round. And uh, Mary Pierce has a struggling start. She double faults to lose the first game to a break. Last. Stadium court where for Mary Pierce it is like an opening night on Broadway. Her first night under the lights on a big stadium court at the U.S. Open. And she began by having her serve broken by Mary Jo Fernandez. I think this would probably be quite a nerve-wracking experience coming out here and playing against Mary Jo. This is only the fifth Grand Slam appearance for Mary Pierce. She played the French in 90, the French in the U.S. in 91, and the French in the U.S. this year. She's never played the Australian or Wimbledon. Mary Pierce is wild from the start, mm. but this is her game. She knows two things, to hit hard and to hit harder. <laughs> when she gets going, she could be trouble for Mary Jo. Mary Jo, on the other hand, has to just stay with her the whole time, and she should be okay. Oh! Okay. Well, Mary Pierce has not won a point yet. And Fernandez is too low. And Lisa's right. When her game is hot, she's hot. When she wins the singles tournament, like she's won those two this year, and she's won a few in the past as well, she seems to go on and win the doubles at the same event. So I think she has some hot and cold results. She's taking her time, which is very important right now. Second double fault. It is, and you're going to see a lot of those because Mary Pierce has a very high ball toss, but she doesn't go up after it. She lets it drop, and when you do that, you're gonna you're gonna double fault a lot. Looks like she has a hitch as a result. Not really a hitch, mm -hmm. but it drops right there. Hitch, 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 hitch. That is quite rare to toss the ball up that high. Steffi Groff does it. Yvonne Lendl does it. And most people are taught when they're growing up to hit it at the peak, not when it's coming down. So it seems to work for those other two, though. It's, it is very rare. Thank you. 
She doesn't seem to change her toss on the second serve at all. Toss is high on the second serve also, but she does hit it with a little more spin. Look at this second serve right here. High toss. Good knee bend there. She needs to get up and over it, which she does there. That keeps the ball in the court. Here's a very erratic start. Slams one long. That is good by Fernandez. Mary Pierce gave herself away a little early there and closed on the net. 15 toss. Good deep approach shot coming in. Here she moves in so quickly and gave herself away. Mary Jo had the entire court to get that lob in. Net! That's from lack of experience, of course. And coming into the net, but I still think it's a good idea. You've got to change your game. Do something different when you're down five love. But stop making unforced errors. She has 16. Mary Jo still at zero. Slow the pace down. <laughs> Timely use of the short ball by Mary Jo Fernandez. Mary Pierce does not like to move forward. You see her moving in. She's way off. She's too far off of the court to recover to get back in. Mary Jo Fernandez goes straight at her. When it works, feet. Yeah, when it works, it's a heavy, heavy shot. She mixes it up a little bit there, and then this one turns her shoulders, leans straight into the ball. Five, ten and a half. Big girl. Very strong. First base. It wasn't the power, it was the placement. Aces always come when someone is expecting something else. Double step down. Pierce hits the ball so hard. Not a lot of margin for air. Comes in. Drills that. Got the good angle. Oh. Good serve by Mary Jo Fernandez. And she wins the first set. In 21 minutes. What a difference compared to her first three matches that she played, especially the first two where she lost first sets in both of those matches 6-3 had to come back and win the next two she really picked up the level of her game she started so slowly in those first two matches and failed to make an impression upon her opponents tonight things are different Someone who's not loose to losing sets of love. You can just read it. Yeah. You know, both of you made an interesting point about a young player like a Mary Pierce. And this is where, if you draw an analogy in almost any sport, when a player reaches the highest level, there's always something that they've not encountered before, and they need to, in any sport, need to have somebody that'll help them make those adjustments.
she finally took advantage of her opportunity when it came. And Mary Pierce with the big swinging backhand. She feels very comfortable because that's exactly how she hits it in the backcourt. It's amazing to see that she went backwards when she hit that volley. been hitting with Renee Gomez He's from the Nick Voluntary Tennis Academy and Nick's been at the practices watching something new there you see him of course Andre Agassi's coach as well Again, taking advantage of that short ball. Good first serve. When you get that big one in, you've got to follow it up with something even bigger. And she was trying that in the first set, but just produced a lot of unforced errors. fault on the game point, her fourth of the match. It's always, at least that one was in the net. She's pulling down, needs to reach up a little bit more. Snap that wrist. That's right, that's right. Very key game. I always think the first game of a set is setting a precedent. Mary Jo wants to keep that momentum, not let Mary Pierce in the match at all. And of course, Mary Jo, Mary Pierce wants to put that last set out of her mind and say, okay, I still got two sets to win. I can win both of these. All of those have to change. Well, Mary Pierce serving to stay in the match now. Now a break in the second set. Mary Jo Fernandez moving over again and threatening with the forehand on the second serve return. And that's the risk you take. When you move over, you're taking the risk that the person's going to catch you into your body or is going to move you out wide. But it's a good risk for Mary Jo Fernandez at this point. I've hardly ever seen shots hit this hard. Now watch this next one. She really lays into it. Shoulders. Everything. What pace? Off the ground, is, does Mary Pierce hit the ball as, as hard as Celis? Yeah, I think she had, hits hard once in a while and even harder. It's just a question that Monica's go in 98% mm -hmm. of the time. And Monica plays with a, with a purpose. That's an impressive game. Her best game of the match. We'll come back, though, with Mary Jo Fernandez serving for a berth in the quarters. That zero errors in the first set by Mary Jo. And Mary Pierce's errors have stayed pretty constant. Mary Pierce has played her way into this match, and you have to give her credit. This match is also going to teach her a lot about using the court, using 
good court sense when you're playing points. Fifteen. Mary Pierce has actually come to the net more than Mary Jo Fernandez. Six of eleven points at the net she won. It's only fifty-five percent success rate, but I still think, again, she's only seventeen. It's good. She's trying to add to her game. And Mary Jo hasn't been to the net once. Net. Good scrambling from Mary Jo Fernandez to stay in that point. Doing exactly what she needs to do when you're playing someone that hits so hard. You don't go for big shots yourself. Just try to keep them nice and deep. Mary Pierce just learned is to hit the ball anyway. I can't agree with you more, Ted. I always say hit it, play the point, and if they call it, great. But why give away a free point in case they miss it? I've seen balls six inches out that they don't call. Play every ball. That gives Mary Jo Fernandez two match points. big hitter so far. She's now into the quarterfinals where she's going to meet Gabriella Sabatini, a much different customer than she's played so far. Sabatini mixes the ball up more. She comes into net. Mary Jo's going to have to play a little bit differently, but she's ready for the task and she has a very good record against Gabriella Sabatini. I think Mary Jo has to be, play, be pleased with her match tonight. She played very focused, beginning the second set, made a few unforced errors that she, of course, wouldn't like to have seen. I think she's increased the level of her play, playing focused and up to playing Gabriella Sabatini. He was on the grandstand court. Labat from Argentina. Drop serving it two all here on the first set. And showing her great athletic ability, chasing that one down and hitting a winner off it to win the set 6 2. And she continued to serve well, something that has been a very consistent factor for her throughout the tournament thus far. Serving 4-2 here. Labat had upset Amanda Kutzer of South Africa, but she was not in it. With drop today, we won it handily. 2-2 two and two to advance to the quarterfinals. Number five seed, Arancha Sanchez Vicario, continues her outstanding play. She just absolutely demolished Zena Garrison on the stadium court, the first match of the day out there. She won the first set Six love and took command early in the second as well. Garrison serving match point against. Yeah, 
And so Arancho Sanchez Vicario continues to impress in this tournament. And moves along to meet Steffi Graf next. Coming up on the stadium court, the featured match of the day, top seed Jim Courier will meet John McEnroe. And then we'll have the conclusion of the Malavia washington Henri Leconte match. That'll be followed by Pete Sampras, the favorite of many here, the number three seed and 1990 champion. He takes on Guy Forget in that Davis Cup rematch. Meanwhile, out on the grandstand, a young American, Carrie Cunningham, is underway against Manuela Maleva Franier, the number nine seed. And Maleva Franier right now is leading one love. And let's go out to Jim Nance and Mary Carrillo on the grandstand court. Cunningham serving at 15 love. Maleva Franier served the love game in the first game of this match. There's a look at 20-year-old Carrie Cunningham from Lavanya, Michigan having her best performance in Grand Slam competition. 15 all. Year, Mary what about her oh, she's a I think what she should get through this match because she is just so cagey and has such good court sense she's a four-time quarterfinalist at the US Open she beat Elna Reinach as you can see Louise Allen struggled with Stranadova in the match before this 1530 Sister Magdalena will be playing on this very same court later today. Now, Carrie Cunningham ranks 72nd in the world. Yeah, but she's had a terrific summer. She's lost about 20 pounds. She played Billie Jean King's World Team Tennis and got to practice with a very cohesive team. Jimmy Connors, Mayor Lupiatek, John Lloyd. Those two, by the way, are out here watching this match. She improved so much just training with them. that's really improved since she's dropped all that weight. She's a tough fighter and she's a battler from the baseline, as is her opponent. Did a good job of feeling that one. Beautiful point, 40-30. It's not sunny out today at all, but Carrie Cunningham is, uh, is endorsed by sunglasses. You see Brad Gilbert do that as well. Some of the players these days who have the sunglasses endorsements don't wear them in their singles matches, but they do wear them in doubles. <laughs> Carrie's one. Again, it's a little sort of unnecessary on a day like today. I've seen the glasses come into the golf circuit, too, uh, through endorsements. Robert Gomez plays with them. Rain or shine. Carrie had to think long and hard before turning away college scholarships. Very, very bright 
woman. Graduated summa cum laude from her high school. This is a fourth round match. Carrie Cunningham, first time she's ever been to the fourth round of a Grand Slam event. Third round at Australian and the French in 91, previous best. 15 all. If Manuela Maleva Franier wins this match and her sister Maggie beats Chanda Rubin later today on this court, they play one another. Cunningham is trying to take advantage of the short ball, but even from well beyond the baseline, Manuela Maleva comes up with a laser-like pass. I'm very surprised to see her moving so well. You can see that her right ankle is taped. She injured it the Thursday before the U.S. Open began. Asked for a later starting date, which she was given. I happened to fly with her from Orlando to LaGuardia Airport. She immediately got on the plane and asked for an ice bag from the stewardess. She had just, it was still big, big and kind of purplish looking, at, and I thought, man, are you sure you're going to be able to play the open? But she seems to be moving quite well. Well, I'm lucky if I get a bag of peanuts, much less a bag of ice. <laughs> the interesting part of the draw is that Shonda Rubin, who beat Martina, uh, Maggie beat Martina Navratilova, Shonda Rubin beat Katerina Malema. There are three of them. Katerina, number 15 in the world, so it's a very big win. 40-15, and Manuela, the only seated player left in her quarter. Manuela doesn't make it to the semifinals through this quarter of the draw. It'll be the first time since 76 that an unseated player made it to the women's semis. That was Mina Yasevich. That's right. Mima of Yugoslavia. And a double fault for Manuela. Great day of tennis ahead. Courier and McEnroe. The stadium court in about 10 minutes. <laughs> Singles titles take center stage. Welcome to day nine at the U.S. Open. names in the game remain and temperatures today should hover around the mid 70s the humidity is up which could make for uncomfortable playing conditions it rained earlier this morning and showers unfortunately in the forecast welcome once again to our usa network coverage of the 1992 u.s open i'm joel myers and over the course of the first nine days of the open well we've seen stories unfold like the departure of two of the game's greats Feeling about the tournament. 
I was really concentrated, really focused. And so I said, well, I can do this. You know, I, I believe in myself. But it wasn't always that way. Often considered the Greta Garbo of women's tennis, Sabatini's elusive attitude and inability to rise to the top of the tour rankings cast doubt both in her mind and in the minds of those around her. Until that faded day in Flushing nearly two years ago, when a win over Steffi Groff erased the demon. Much credit must go to a former rock and roll tennis pro named Carlos Kiermaier. It was uh, a very special moment uh, when he came. Uh, I was going through a difficult moment in, in my life. I thought I had everything. Uh, I had a good body, you know, a good game, but um, I needed confidence to do those things. And that's what he did. He gave me confidence. What I wanted to do was to show her when she had openings and opportunities to come into the net, to give her a confidence that she was a good volleyer and she could uh, play at the net just like she played from the backcourt. He has the kind of playful spirit that was perfect for, for Gabriella. His joy of, of the game, his, also his, his knowledge of a full court game, of how to be an attacking but smart player, and uh, to go out on the court and just to genuinely love doing what is being done out there. After I won the Open, everything started to, to change completely. Forced to emerge from behind her shadow, the net effect has been even greater commercial appeal for one of the most heavily endorsed players in the history of the game. It's something different, different than tennis. And, and it has uh, some things that are also little secrets that you can find and, and uh, you can show your, your personality uh, more. And I enjoy that too. When the Mullins company approached me about creating a perfume, I was delighted. Each time I have to do a speech, it's hard. <laughs> I think I will never get used to it. We as a tennis player, we practice how to play, how to hit the ball. So the other things, you have to learn, but it's not very easy for, for Gary, I would say. I think she's learning and she's, she's starting to have fun with that. She's starting to play with that. But while Sabatini is opening up more each year and becoming responsive to the continuous demands of a very public profession, there will always be the side of her that simply prefers a walk on the quiet side. I like to, uh, to dream a lot, to think about how I am and how I feel. I always try to, to look uh, at the future and, and try to, you know, to move and, and to, to improve and to be better each time. And that young lady is up next on Stadium Court, Gabriela Sabatini against Mary Jo Fernandez. One thing we know for certain, that match will not go five sets. Be right back on USA. Swamp tennis. It's turned into a warm, muggy afternoon of the National Tennis Center. Temperature now in the low 80s, and we're just a couple of minutes away from the showdown between Gabriela Sabatini to your left, Mary Jo Fernandez to your right. But first, let's head down to our USA Network studios and join Lee Shires with his guest, who's, well, Lighter, pound-wise, four hours and 19 minutes later. Lee? Thank you, Joe. Stefan Evers, congrats. The number four seed and seventh seeded Mary Jo Fernandez. First game, first set, 15-30. Oh! Thirty all. These two have played three times this year alone, sixteen times total. But Mary Jo Tracy winning the Australian Open. played this year at the, in the semis the Australian Mary Jo won one and four Gabby won the other two and Gabby's won ten out of those sixteen
Abby has been tested a bit in these early rounds. Mary Jo had an easy go of it against Mary Pierce. And is that, as I asked uh, John McEnroe, is that good or bad? Well, it can be good and bad. So definitive, maybe. Well, when I was looking at that replay, Gabby came up with a big down-the-line winner. I think if you have one match that's very tough and you get through it, then it gives you a lot of confidence. If you start to have all your matches where you're having a lot of trouble, then it's going to hurt your confidence level. You're not playing with that much confidence. 22 years old, only Grand Slam title here at the Open two years ago. She beat Steffi Graf straight sets. That's why Deuce. Joe Fernandez, born in the Dominican Republic, now lives in Miami. Lost in the third round here last year, but was a semifinalist two years ago before losing to Sabatini 6-3 in the third. So these two have quite a history together. Once it hit the ground, Mary Jo looked, didn't understand. That ball really scooted along the ground. I think it must have hit something. Sabatini defeated Harvey Wilde pretty easily. Julia Allard from France. Zvereva had a tough time. Up 5-3 in that second set, lost it, barely won in the third. And Sabine Appelman from Belgium, relatively easy, 1-3. Joe really attacked that approach, moved in a couple of feet, really hit it on the rise. Mary Joe had a tough time in the beginning. Donna Favor from Florida, 6-4 in the third. Medvedeva, 6-1 in the third. Brenda Schultz, big server, 4-2. And, and Mary Pierce the other night, 0-4. And Mary Pierce, 16th seed from France now. Forehand. Mary Jo gets good balance. This shot loosens the wrist a little. Nice whipping top spin. about eight miles from Manhattan. A muggy, sun-drenched day. Ladies quarterfinal match, Gabriella Sabatini and Mary Jo Fernandez. Oh, and a winner for Mary Jo. Not an easy shot to hit, an angle like that going off the two-handed backhand. Great timing, way to attack it. Heavy top spin down the line. 
Gabriella brushes straight up through the ball, sees that Mary Jo can barely get it, moves in. Delicate drop shot cross court. Joe's had a tough time this year in the other Grand Slams. After she got to the finals of the Australian, she lost in the third round to Sabine Hack and the French in the third round of Wimbledon to Amy Frazier. Both surprising losses. Oh, yeah, Gabriella just doesn't look like she's found the rhythm yet. Mary Jo is attacking. I think that's her plan is to try to attack everything she can, even if that means staying at the baseline, hitting with a lot of authority, a lot of depth. Another is not moving is not not moving quite with a lot of grace right now, or, or very fluid. did appear to be in. Seldom on the replays can you tell, but that did appear. However, word from the chair wasn't seen clearly, so thus no overrule. <coughs> Deuce. play right there. Didn't hit it with a lot of pace. Gabriella sees that this one is short. It's a nice deep approach. Mary Jo takes the pace off. Flicks her wrists over. Just gives it a nice little angle. A break point again. idea. Quite enough muscle. Gabriella now trying to come into the net more. Trying to be more aggressive. Gabriella's come to the net much more throughout this tournament than Mary Jo has. Come to the net 98 times and 160 five of those approaches. Mary Jo's come in 65 times, 144. Great return of serve. That's why I gave Mary Jo the check on the return. Doesn't give you a break on that second serve. Always attacking it. Look where she is, way inside the baseline. Moving around, moving forward. Goes for the winner and gets it. Thing behind.
reminder, all those thoughts get that momentum right back. Doesn't want to let Gabby get into this match. <laughs> Mary Jo move way in. <laughs> Bikini took eight weeks off this summer, uh, probably just to get her battery recharged a little bit, has struggled. Maybe that's one of the reasons she hasn't looked as sharp as we might have expected here in the early rounds of the Open. But now we're in the quarterfinals and just going to have to turn it up a notch or two. Mary Jo Fernandez up 5-1 in the first set. some pace on that little backward overhead. This lob from Mary Jo was great. Sabatini did well to hit that backwards. Mary Jo comes in on this one. She hits a lot of pace on this backhand. Mary Jo can't quite handle it. Ball's that hard. It's hard to try a drop volley. Sabatini, 8 of 24. Fernandez, 8 of 11. I mean, Sabatini's getting more first serves in, but they're not penetrating enough. There, that first serve is 94 miles an hour. She's trying to hit it a little harder. Those last two, Bill, were the first ones that she really seemed to hit all out. The other one, she seemed to just spin in. Do you think it's good for players to take a little break from the game every now and then? Well, Gabby said she planned it because last year, at the end of the year, the last six months of the year, she was mentally and physically tired. But I think she'll take a look at this year and realize that she hasn't had enough match play for Wimbledon. <laughs> She got it. Bill, she, Gabby chose to play only one tournament. That was San Diego, right before the Open. Otherwise, she had all those weeks off after Wimbledon. And that, that's not enough matches. She went in, got a bye first round, won her second round match, and lost to Leila Meshki 3-0 or 0-3 in that third round. Two matches is not enough for the whole summer. Sabatini looking strong at her service game. And we are now at 5-2. Meanwhile, Sanchez Ferreira. 30-15. Now 30 all. There's the story. 5-2. Mary Jo out quickly. Winning the first five games. Sabatini with a break and then held her serve. Wide. Second double fault. Mary Cho was up 30 love in this game. She's made three on four stairs, two on four stairs from the backcourt. And that double fault, really trying to go for it. And that's been the story of the match so far, is Mary Jo's trying to 
hit a lot harder, a lot deeper, going for her shots a lot more. Gabriella seems to be retrieving, running everything down, not hitting with much authority. Just clip the top of the net there. First serve. second serve. Now another break opportunity for Sabatini trying to climb back in this first set. Winner here will play Monica Sellis or Patricia He in the semifinals. Check in again at the grandstand, Bear. All right, Bill. Winner of that match will play the winner of our marquee match tonight, Malavia Washington or Michael Chang. Trying to move Mary Jo around a little bit more. Needs to move her around. Mary Jo can hit that inside out forehand. That's her favorite shot. Better to run her to her forehand. Chances pass by Gabby. Go back again to Deuce. a runaway first set. She's hanging in there. Suddenly is tightening up. This is break point number four. by hitting it down the middle, but not hard enough. It was a real floater. Mary Jo had plenty of time to set up, prepare for that passing shot. Caught it on the rise. Did a nice drop shot. Gabrielle had too much 
space to cover. Now Sabatini serving four, set number two. Lost nine points this set. Total control this set. Gabby's second serve wasn't hard or deep, right in the middle of the box. Just sat there for Mary Jo to hit. She struck it well, right in the line. set points to even things at one set apiece. Meanwhile, Monica Sellis and Patricia He underway over at the grandstand. Big serve. First eight. We are all even. Watch out for Malavia Washington, the 14th seed. As we look down at the stadium court, and let's move across the way, check in with Linda Pence over at the grandstand court. And rising about this match between Monica Sellers and Patricia He this morning, Italian journalist Rino Tomasi said even the best tale must have an end, and it certainly looks as if... Patricia He's U.S. Open dream is rapidly coming to a very abrupt end here today. She is trailing Monica Sellers, the top seed at the bottom of your screen. Love four in the first set. We're at 15 all. Called wide there. Monica Sellers is going to have a look. Patricia He. Ranked 36 in the world, was the giant killer this week. She beat Jennifer Capriati, Helena Sukova, but she's in all sorts of trouble today against Monica Sellers with 12 unforced errors already in this match and really not making any impact at all against the top seed. But she has a chance now setting up double break point against the Sellers serve. She has not really threatened too much so far in this match, but she's very quick around the court, Patricia He. Getting ready to set over the top of the stadium. From that view up there, you get some beautiful sunsets behind Manhattan. <laughs> Meanwhile, the story here, Mary Jo Fernandez and Gabriela Sabatini on serve at 3-2. See, the first two sets very different. Fernandez in the first set, Sabatini came roaring back in the second.
see that part of Gabriella Sabatini's in the sun over there, parts in the shade. A little bit difficult sometimes when the ball's coming out and in from the shade. Much better to have all sun or all shade. Second serve, a rare big serve from Gabriella Sabatini. Mostly been spinning her serve in, although she really picked it up in the second set. And I think she needs to go for it more. Might as well go for that big one. It worked in the second set. Left only two points on her own serve. Mary Jo doing the right thing by attacking. She's moving around, ready to attack, but it's way too short. Right into the Sabatini backhand. Sabatini's got that down the line wired. Unforced air so early in the point from Gabriella Sabatini. Thirty all. attention it's right behind us and thus out of our line of sight oh it was a squirrel I don't know that a squirrel would get that much attention <laughs> must it be was, a large squirrel if it was right behind me I'd run too I'd probably scream too, just Squirrel? like she was doing. Squirrels in New York can be tough. <laughs> so great point for Mary Jo Fernandez. The book four two in this third set. Gabriella Sabatini's got to turn the juice on now. She's looking a little tired, Bill. Not quite getting the ball as quickly. She didn't hit the shot. She Major unforced air here. Mary Jo didn't have a lot on the shot. Gabriella, Gabriella having a chance to move in, cut it too close. Hit right on the tape. She's looking a little tired. That's when you start to have those unforced airs. Your feet don't quite get all the way to the ball. Your mind doesn't stay as focused. Mary Jo winning 13, 11 of the last 13 points. Yes! Really taking control since she was broken for Gabriella to go up 2-1. They've been playing for an hour and 43 minutes.
the longest point of the match. Look, if Mary Jo had a good shot here, just needed to bunt it down the line, but hit it too long. And she knows that Gabriella wouldn't have been able to get that one. Joe taking a little more time. The point was pretty tiring. much topspin. A lot of times that added topspin allows for Mary Jo to get there in time. Mary Jo's are much more flat. Carry through faster. And watch Gabby move in and right before Mary Jo serves she moves back again. Make everybody at home feel good. Even the best can do shots like that. Mary Jo feel good. Three point. I never understood Sam as Gabby comes in, then goes backwards. Might as well stay up there and attack it. Monica Sellers is serving for the match at 5-2 in the second set. We're at 30-15. Monica Sellers serves. And that error from he gives Monica Sellers two match points. He has been plagued by unforced errors this match. 35 unforced errors. Just 14 points on her serve the entire match, and it's still match point right here. point. The third one for Monica Sellers. Play the winner of the match currently in progress on the stadium court. 
so let's go right back over there. And so we have our first semifinalist of the 1992 U.S. Open. Meanwhile here, still all even. Four games apiece in the third set. Mary Jo Fernandez serving at 15.30. Good play to come in, nice and deep. Gabriella's pass way too high. Mary Jo able to put it away. Point before that one. Gabriella won it when she hit a net court on a drop shot. Just dribbled over. A lot of tension. Oh. Most of the time they're winning when they play with controlled aggression. Gabriella moving way over. Moving around. See, was there an overrule? Lee Bunny Williams. Big time to overrule. 40-30. She did. It's the first overrule. Boy, that was huge. That's about usually about as much as Gabriella complains. Not much. Gabby's won 10 of those times. Three of those matches have gone to three sets. Fernandez winning two of those, but probably the most important one, 1990 U.S. Open semifinals, Gabby won. And we can tell we're in the second week of the Open. We're playing on the stadium almost seven hours, and we haven't even finished two matches. Playing very tight, very tentative. Almost two hours, and Gabriella played the best in the second set when she was attacking on her own. Produced some unforced errors for Mary Jo. Mary Jo's played a smart, smart match.
hard-fought match. Mary Jo Fernandez, the number seven seed, is in the semifinals. Harold Solomon, her coach, applauding along with the rest of the house here at the stadium court. We'll be back to the open in a moment. Easy, easy first set. Lost control in the second. You were up a break in the third. Were there times where you thought you might be letting it slip away? Can you hear me? Well, I started off really well, like you said. The first five games, I hardly made any mistakes, and I was attacking. And then, uh... She started playing a little bit better. I think she started going for a little bit more. She knew she had to do something to... She knew she had to... That's the crowd, Mary Jo, complaining that they've moved the Boris Becker of Lendl match till tonight. And uh, she knew she had to play more aggressive. She did start playing more aggressive. A uh, few points, you know, I made a couple mistakes in the second set, and then she played well. She didn't make many mistakes in the third set. You know, I stuck in my game plan. I was trying to, you know, be aggressive, come in. Um, you know, even though I, I made a, a few errors of overheads, I knew that was the right play. So, um, you know, I, I really just came in as much as I could. That's what you've been talking about all year, new aggression taking risks. Do you feel like now it's finally paying off for you, and will it take you through past Monica Seles in the semifinals? Well, I sure hope so. I know that's the way I have to play against her to win, too. So, uh, it's the only, you know, way to go right now. To beat, you know, the top four, top five players, you have to play aggressive. It doesn't really uh, help to get more ball back anymore. Well, you're 1-12 against Monica Seles. Can you beat her here at the U.S. Open, your home country? Well, we'll find out, but I'm going to give her my best shot. Great. Well, Mary Jo, congratulations to you. Now, let's take it back to Joel.